hey, it's Darius. And congratulations to I-75ers who let me know that they passed the CPA exam this month and also last month. So congratulations to them. Now, what about you? Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on this list for you next month. The exam is going to expect you to understand the time value of money and the concept of present value. It pops up in many different topics, and you may not have seen this for a while, so let's start with the basics. It's built around the fact that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar to be received in the future. And why is that? Because if you had the money today, you can invest it. It has potential to earn interest or investment returns. Money can grow over time. If you have the money now, you can invest it to earn interest or returns, making that money worth more in the future compared to waiting a year or more to get paid. Also, a big part of the time value of money concept is inflation because inflation erodes purchasing power. Over time, the value of money decreases due to rising prices, meaning future money, if you have to wait for it, may buy less than it does if you had it today. So for these reasons, it's better to have the money today than to wait until next year to receive it. All right, let's try this. Why is receiving a dollar today worth more than receiving a dollar in the future? A, because money loses value when it is saved. B, because money today can be invested to earn interest or returns. C, because inflation causes prices to decrease over time. D, because the government regulates the time value of money each year. And the answer is B, because money today can be invested to earn interest or returns. The time value of money principle states that money received today can be invested to earn interest or generate returns. But if you have to wait to receive that dollar in the future, then you don't have it today. And if you don't have it today, then you can't invest it today and it won't be earning interest or returns. So the whole idea behind receiving a dollar today is worth more than receiving it in the future is that money today can be invested to earn interest or returns. A is wrong. A says because money loses value when it's saved. Well, saving money does not inherently make it lose value. It depends on the savings vehicle. What are you saving it in? And how did that savings vehicle perform compared to inflation? And C is wrong. C says because inflation causes prices to decrease over time. No, inflation causes prices to increase, not decrease. Over time, inflation reduces the purchasing power of money which is why a dollar received in the future is worth less than a dollar received today. And D is wrong. While governments and central banks influence monetary policy, they do not directly dictate the time value of money. Instead, the time value of money is based on investment opportunities and the ability to earn interest or returns over time. And the question asked, why is receiving a dollar today worth more than receiving a dollar in the future? And the answer is B, because money today can be invested to earn interest or returns. Let's take a look at an example of using present value. We'll choose between a lump sum or a future payment. Imagine you just won a $10,000 prize. Congratulations, the contest is giving you two options. Receive the $10,000 today or receive $12,000 five years from now. At first, option two might sound better because 12,000 is more than 10,000, but before making a decision, you got to consider the time value of money. We know how much the 10,000 is worth today, 10,000, if we choose that option. But if the current market rate is 5%, how much is the present value of the $12,000 to be received in one lump sum payment five years from now? Well, the exam would provide the present value factor that corresponds with 5% and five years. And it's 0.7835. We would then have to multiply the factor times the $12,000 lump sum payment to be received five years from now, assuming a 5% interest rate. And now we know that the present value of $12,000 to be received in one lump sum payment five years from now is 9403. This means that you should choose the $10,000 today because it's worth more 
than the present value of 12000 to be received in one lump sum five years from now in a 5% interest rate environment. Now, what do we make of this present value factor? They tell us it's 0 0.7835, and the exam will provide it. But what does it mean? It means that a dollar received five years from now is worth only about 78 cents today, assuming rates are 5%. All right, let's try this question. You've won a cash prize and must choose between two options. Option one, receive $15,000 today. Option two, receive $18,000 in six years. Well, if the appropriate discount rate is 4% and the present value factor for 4% six years is 0.7903, which of the following is correct? A says $1 today is worth approximately 79 cents six years from now. B says $1 received six years from now is worth approximately 79 cents today. Yeah, that looks good. C, the decision should be made to take the 18,000 in six years. D, the present value of the 18,000 is approximately 11,855. And the answer is B, $1 received six years from now is worth approximately 79 cents today. As for the calculation and which option we should choose, well, they give us the factor of 0 0.7903. We'll multiply that by the 18,000, the lump sum to be received six years from now. And it's worth only 14,225 today. So it means the present value of 18,000 received six years from now at 4% is only 14,226. And that's less than the 15,000 that we could get today. So we would make the choice to receive the 15,000 in one lump sum today because the 15000 is worth more than the present value of 18000 to be received six years from now. And that present value factor, 0.7903, it means that a dollar received in six years at 4% is worth only about 79 cents today. And that's why letter B is a good choice. A present value factor tells us how much a future dollar is worth today when discounted at a given rate. A is wrong. A says $1 today is worth approximately 79 cents six years from now. No, because money today grows over time when invested. If anything, a dollar today would be worth more than a dollar in the future if invested at 4%. And C is wrong. C says the decision should be made to take the 18,000 in six years. We said no, because the present value of 18,000 in six years is only 14,226. That's less than the 15,000 available today. So we should take the 15,000 today. And D is wrong. The present value of the 18,000 is not 11,855. It's about 14,226. And the question asks, you've won a prize. You must choose between two options. Receive a lump sum payment of 15,000 today or receive a lump sum payment of 18,000 in six years. If the appropriate discount rate is 4% a year and the present value factor for 4% six years is 0.7903, which of the following is correct? And the answer is B. $1 received six years from now is worth approximately 79 cents today. All right, now we're going to compare the present value of one payment with the present value of an annuity. Annuity means same payment every time. So we looked at the present value of one, which represents how much one future payment amount is worth today, discounted at a specific rate over a set period the present value of one lump sum payment. Now we're going to look at the present value of an ordinary annuity, which represents the value today of a series of equal future payments, the first payment being one year from today. Let's look at an example of when we would use the present value of an ordinary annuity factor. And it would happen when there's the same payment every year. So on December 31st, year 11, Porath Corp purchased equipment by issuing an interest-bearing note payable. A payment of $7,000 is to be made, not just once, but at the end of each year for the next four years, starting one year from today on December 31st, year 12. Today, it's December 31st, year 11. The first payment is one year from today on December 31st, year 12. And the applicable interest rate, 6%. So now we need the factor. The present value of an ordinary annuity for four years at 6%, here's the factor, 3.465, and that will be provided to you on the exam. Here's what they want to know. What amount should Porath capitalize as the cost of the equipment? 
So we know there's going to be four payments of $7,000. Should we just capitalize $28,000? No. The capitalized cost should include the present value of the four equal future payments. So $7,000, but not times four, times the present value of an ordinary annuity. The factor that we need is for four years at 6%, 3.465. And then if you multiply that, the equipment will be capitalized for 24255 not 28000 Why? Because the present value of those four equal $7,000 payments over the next four years, they're not worth $28,000 today. They're worth 24255 today. And if we were making a journal entry, we would debit equipment and credit notes payable for 24255 Increase assets and increase liabilities by 24255 And the biggest difference in what we did on this slide than what we did in the previous is that instead of just one payment being made, there's a series of equal payments. And that's why we use an annuity factor. Annuity means same payment every time. But why did we use the ordinary annuity factor? Because the first payment is when? Not today, but a year from today. Okay, now let's drill down a little more and look at the difference between an ordinary annuity versus an annuity due. In the previous slide, we said the present value of an ordinary annuity represents the value today of a series of equal future payments, the first payment being made one year from today. So that's the ordinary annuity, when the first payment is made one year from today. But the present value of an annuity due represents the value today of a series of equal future payments of principal and interest, but the first payments being made today, not a year from today, that first payments being made today. That's how you know it's annuity due. Annuity due as in due now, first payment due today. All right, the cost of the equipment using the present value of annuity due because the first payment's being made today. So similar facts, December 31st, year 11, Poor F Corp purchased equipment by issuing an interest-bearing note payable. A payment of 7000 is to be made at the end of each year for the next four years starting when? Today, on December 31st, year 11. And the applicable interest rate, 6%. So the present value of an annuity due Four years at 6%, 3.6729. What amount should Poor F Corp capitalize as the cost of the equipment? And the capitalized cost should include the present value of the four equal future payments, 7,000 times the present value of an annuity due, 3.6729. The equipment should be capitalized for 25,710. If we were to make a journal entry, we would debit equipment and credit notes payable, 25710 Increase assets, increase liabilities. Notice when the first payment is due now, we use the present value of an annuity due factor, the 3.6729. And we got 25710 for the present value. When the first payment was due one year from now, we use the ordinary annuity factor, 3.465, and the present value was only 24000 255. Notice how the present value is higher when the first payment is being made today. So with the present value of annuity due, each payment is made earlier and that reduces the discounting effect. All right, the key difference between the present value of an ordinary annuity and an annuity due is that A, an annuity due has payments that start today, while an ordinary annuity has payments that start one year from today. B, an ordinary annuity has payments that start today, while an annuity due has payments that start one year from today. C, an annuity due determines the present value of a lump sum, while an ordinary annuity determines the present value of a series of payments to be received in the future. D, an ordinary annuity has higher present value than an annuity due. And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the community or comments section. And if you found this video helpful, and you want to see the rest of it and more videos like it, go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road. Get on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Hey, it's Darius, and congratulations to I-75ers who let me know
that they passed the CPA exam this month and also last month. So congratulations to them. Now, what about you? Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on this list for you next month.